Adhuram started walking from Hyderabad on the 8th of May with two friends. Despite the many hardships on the way, they reached home on the 15th of last month. And it was a huge relief because of the help the American India Foundation was providing in his village. Hyderabad se chal ke aaya Andhra ho kar paidal chal chal ke aaya khana pina bhi raste mein biscuit biscuit mil raha tha wohi khate khate aaya aaya tab hamare aaye ke ab ke sar log aaye aur humko bahut madad kiya un log current time center mein bhi le gaya khana pine ka vyavastha kiya while the need of the hour is immediate relief what's also required for families like these is the sustainable and resilient rebuilding of their lives the key focus areas have to be health education and livelihoods and that is what AIF has been focusing on Ayal's father sells vegetables in Eklara village on the outskirts of Surat and for them affording education in the lockdown was out of the question for 12 year old pile the adoption of technology in her education has made all the difference haru nam bayal che hu satman dharma bhang chu ma hu schoolo band hati lockdown na karane corona virus na karane schoolo band hati te mate ame ghare bhanta hata ai american india foundation na લોકો આવતા હતા અહીં ટેબ્લેટ આપતા અને અંદરથી સાધનના વિવિધ વિવિધ પ્રકારની અલગ રીતે અમને ભણાવતા હતા અમને વિડીયો જોઈને બીજ ચોપડામાં ચોપડીમાં લખાવતા અને સમજાવતા હતા અને ભણાવતા પણ હતા Yasmin lives with her five children and her husband is an auto driver who has had no work or earning during two months of lockdown. Yasmin is grateful she got training and subsequently work to stitch masks during the lockdown through a livelihoods project of the American India Foundation. Lockdown me bahut hamare ko madad mila ho paise se. Ta wo tarkari doodh doodh lene paise nahi the kharche karne ke vaaste. तो वहाँ से मिला तो जहाँ सहूलियत हुई है हमारे वो टाइम लॉकडाउन में किसको भी कोई काम नहीं था हमारे को काम मिला पैसे मिले मैं 200 तक बना लेती थी बच्चे हमारे उसका स्टिचिंग करते थे तावा काटते थे उसको जमाते थे मैं सी के देती थी ओवर 100,000 मास्क्स बीइंग मेड बाय नियरली 200 वुमेन मेनी ऑफ देम सिंगल डिसेड Seema had a difficult pregnancy and then came the pandemic making her extremely worried about her delivery help came through in the form of Asha workers and Mansi Corona ko jaise mere man mein dar bhi tha ki kya hoga kaisi delivery hogi kaisi nahi par maine himmat nahi hari kyunki mujhe sahara dene wali Mansi didi aur Asha didi dono ki mujhe sahara mila bahut hame AIF ki taraf se covid 19 ke kit bhi mili hain jisse hum अपना भी और दूसरों का भी बचाव करते हैं मानसी उनके गर्भवतियों की मदद करते हैं समय से उनके टीके लगवाते हैं उन्हें खान पान की सलाह देते हैं Welcome everyone to the AIF Gala 2020 style. My name is Tasneem Chipti. Together with my husband Alex Franz and our co-hosts Mina and Sundar Subramaniam, we thank you very much for joining us today. We hope that you and your families across the continents are staying healthy and safe. This has been a very challenging year, and it's in times like this when organizations like AIF play an ever increasingly important role. Alex and I have been with AIF for going on 10 years now we first came to the organization because of our good friends Farida and Imtiaz Katawala we've stayed with the organization for two very important reasons first AIF is a smart and efficient organization AIF chooses its programs carefully identifying areas where it's likely to have the most impact and then AIF partners with local organizations to help implement and administer 
This means that AIF minimizes overhead costs and ensures that every dollar it raises has maximum impact to lives in India. Second and equally important to us is the fact that AIF chooses its programs based on need. That means that AIF helps people regardless of caste, religion, physical ability, shade of skin, or gender. In so doing, AIF helps promote the humanity in all of us. These qualities make AIF a truly intelligent, agile, and humanitarian organization. I'm happy to say that this year I saw AIF support its traditional programs like Monsi and LAMP, but also I saw AIF pivot rapidly to help address the unique and challenging needs caused by COVID-19. Hello, I just wanted to also share a few reasons why I support AIF. Um, just like the Sneems family, my family also has a very strong belief in uplift through education and in particular the education of women um, values very clearly reflected by AIF. On a more personal level, uh, as a young boy, I remember reading uh, a book uh, that made a big impact on me about uh, the Greek civilization in the Mediterranean. In that book, there's a Persian spy who is trying to quietly slip out of a Carthage, uh, Carthage, a Phoenician city. The Persian negotiates a passage with a Greek merchant um, uh, boat to slip out of town. Before they can leave, however, the Greek has to run an errand in town. The Persian decides to follow the Greek in order to make sure that he's not being sold out to the authorities. They end up making their way to a courtyard where a wealthy Phoenician is, is flaying a young Greek boy slave to death as punishment. The Greek merchant attempts to buy the, the slave boy in order to save his life, but the Phoenician des demands an exorbitant price uh, for the life of the boy. The Persian quickly decides to reveal himself. He makes up the difference between the asking price and the offering price, and the young boy is saved. As the three men make their way back to the boat, um, the Greek turns to the Persian and he says, You know, I had to try to save that boy because he's Greek and I'm also Greek. But why the heck did you get involved and spend your money? The Persian turns to him and says, Because the boy is human and I'm also human. So that is why I'm here, and I think that's really why most of us are here. Uh, most fundamentally, I think charity towards complete strangers is a way for all of us to affirm our common humanity and solidarity with uh, those who are the least fortunate amongst us. Um, I hope that you enjoyed today's program and I hope that you will join uh, us in donating to AIF. Thank you very much. Greetings ladies and gentlemen. This is the Shillong Chamber Choir and we're delighted to be performing for the American India Foundation, an organization that helps all communities and those in need. A special mention to Tasneem and Alex. And at this time of the global pandemic, never has the word friendship been so important. Let us help one another and those who are marginalized. The American India Foundation helps bridge the gap and brings India and America closer together. We had the honor of performing the song for President Barack Obama. Ladies and gentlemen, ye dositi ham nehi todenge. Yeah.
Namaste. I'm comedian Rajiv Sathyal coming to you from beautiful downtown Burbank. I'm here, you're there. It's like a coexisting video. We could shorten that to COVID. Maybe not such a great idea. That choir, I gotta tell you, was perfect, and that was the ideal song to kickstart the program and honor Susan Whitehead. Thank you so much to the choir. We really appreciate that. I'm glad we're doing this pre-recorded because I've done a lot of these virtual live comedy shows and they have a five second lag. Luckily, I prepared for that because I played the American South. Okay, that is the American South to be clear. You know, that it, the American South and the Indian South are complete opposites because in India we keep the smart people in the South. I can make that joke because I'm Punjabi. I'm about as far north as it gets. So you know what, that's that. I have done a number of programs for AIF over the years. In fact, my very, very first one was right after I arrived here in Los Angeles, California in 2006. There were about 500 brown people there, and for years afterwards, people came up to me and were like, you're the guy from the AIF gala, right? So thank you, AIF, for helping me to launch my full-time career here, in, here on the West Coast, I should say. You know, who here, by the way, is zoomed out? My wife and I were on a Zoom call recently, and they're doing all of these Zoom calls for birthdays and anniversaries and showers. We were 20 minutes late, and we finally had to admit to ourselves that traffic was never really the reason we were late, right? You really finally come to grips with the fact that, yeah, okay, all that traffic getting to our bedroom to get our computer set up. Yeah, there is no traffic. There are no cars. It's like, wait a second. It was never that. I think we just have to finally admit the fact that our lives are in a constant state of disorder and disarray. Now, on all of these video calls, I'm a bigger narcissist than I ever really thought possible because it doesn't really matter how good looking the person is on the other side of the call, whether it's Zoom or FaceTime or whatever, I still look at myself in that little window. I don't know if you do that as well on all these calls, but I'm always looking at myself in the window. Can you just look at the person or into the camera or something? I'm mean, clearly, I cannot do that. And I don't know what's going on with me. I mean, why do we keep checking our faces on Zoom? We go in for an hour in a meeting in real life, IRL as the kids are saying, and we don't keep checking our faces. I mean, what do we think is going to happen to our face inside of 60 minutes? Nothing. Now, I think what I'm going to do uh, the next time I'm on a Zoom call is maybe screenshot it so that I can upload that as my virtual background in Zoom, and that way I can go take a nap. Everybody, please try to stay positive. Well, don't stay positive. Stay negative. You know what I mean. 
But that's it for me, folks. Uh, if you're on your phones, you can go to Instagram or Facebook and follow me at Funny Indian or just slash Funny Indian on Facebook. Or you can type my name in and it should pop up. Now, thank you so much for having me. Let's get in, on to enjoying the rest of the program. I want to give a special shout out right now to our two dynamic gala chairs. We already heard from Tasneem, Chipti, and Alex Franz. Let's bring in Mina and Sundar Subramaniam. Hello everyone, I'm Meena Subramaniam. And I'm Sundar Subramaniam. And we are delighted to co-host AIF's 2020 Virtual Gala today with Tasneem and Alex. So why do we support AIF? Both Sundar and I come from families that not only emphasize the importance of education, but also empathy, compassion, and care for our community. Even though we attribute our professional success in significant part to the outstanding education that we received, we are also truly grateful for the intangible support that we have enjoyed over the years from our families, friends, and mentors that has enabled us to access and leverage a variety of opportunities. It is a singular desire, therefore, to create such opportunities for the less fortunate, to create a social support network that emboldens and embraces the underprivileged to step up and experience their potential. In a country like India, with stark contrasts and where the chasm between the haves and the have-nots is significant and which has also been magnified by the COVID pandemic, it is critical to create access to basic education, healthcare services and skills training in order to break the cycle of poverty and oppression. So when Sundar and I decided to invest in AIF several years ago, we did so because the organization met two of our critical value criteria, mission and execution. So what is not to like about an organization that is bringing about catalytic change in the social and economic um, environment in a country like India? and also taking a leadership role in addressing the gender bias that is pervasive in our communities and at this time of the COVID crisis creating hope and sustaining hope to a whole bunch of underprivileged people. And when it comes to execution, I'm going to ask Sundar to share his personal experience in observing how the AIF volunteers are transforming the vision of AIF to action on the ground. And I'll end by saying that not all these superheroes wear capes. Thank you, Mina. In February of this year, just before the global lockdown due to the pandemic, I had the opportunity to visit India as part of the annual AIF mission trip. Being my first trip, I was amazed, in fact, simply blown away by what I saw in terms of how AIF's programs were impacting the beneficiary schools, universities, and underprivileged communities that they help. When I sat in the classrooms with 7th and 8th graders and middle and upper school uh, children, what impressed me most was the curriculum that was being taught particularly in the STEM area. They were advanced and on par, I should say, with most public schools here in the US. I was also got to see the dedication and the enthusiasm of the teachers and the staff and the highly interactive mode of uh, classroom education, which to me was a real nice thing to see. But what impressed me most was that 7th and 8th graders were able to explain in detail the scientific and mechanical principles behind the projects that they had built, which included uh, things like robotic models controlled by wireless apps. Just uh, amazing stuff. Now, I'd like to share with you two special moments for me that happened on that trip. The first was my meeting with Sanya, 
a 19-year-old girl at the Garvari University in Mumbai. Sanya was actually placed in a dilemma of having to choose between furthering her education or to seek employment to support her family due to economic hardship. But thanks to AIF, she was able to accomplish both. Sanya enrolled and graduated from AIF's skills training program and works now at a travel agency. The second special moment for me was when I met this little girl in her classroom in a school for migrant worker children in the remote tribal area of Dang in Gujarat state. Thanks to AIF's migration program, this little girl is able to continue her education uninterrupted while her parents have to leave the village to seek seasonal work. These are but just a couple of examples that illustrate the magnitude of impact AIF's programs are making to change the lives of so many in India. In my view, this is something that no statistic or performance of program success can ever convey. I strongly encourage you to experience this firsthand the next time you visit India and see for yourself the payoff of your investment in AIF in the children's eyes as I did. Thank you and enjoy the gala. It's heartwarming to see how young girls like Sanya have benefited and how AIF is helping rebuild lives. Ladies and gentlemen, this next song is Zindagi Milke Bitaenge with a little touch of My Fair Lady. Zindagi Milke Bitaenge Hale Din Gake Sunaenge Hum To Saath Rang Hai Ye Jaha I've never done before 
Dear friends of AIF, let me first express my most sincere and heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you tuning in today. While the world has changed due to COVID-19, our mission has not. In fact, AIF's mission is more important than ever. Hundreds of thousands of women, children and youth rely on AIF support every year so that they can fulfill their dreams and aspirations. And we are able to extend this support only because of your generosity and commitment. So thank you, New England, for showing your commitment yet again. We are very excited to be honoring Susan Whitehead. Susan is a global citizen, a philanthropist, an accomplished attorney, someone who is passionate about Indian art and music, and most importantly, a longtime supporter of AIF and its mission. I want to warmly acknowledge our two gala chairs, Tasneem Chipti and Alex Franz, and Meena and Sundar Subramaniam, who stepped up this year twice and supported the March 2020 gala and when it pivoted to a virtual event now. I want to use this opportunity to acknowledge the generosity, the commitment and the leadership of the New England board who have so passionately been supporting AIF's mission all these years. AIF will complete 20 years next year. We have had to put our 20th anniversary celebrations on hold because of COVID-19, but we have not allowed the pandemic to dent our resolve and ability to support people in need. In fact, we have converted this challenge into a purpose. Our teams on the ground have worked heroically over the last six months to provide relief to more than 450,000 people so far across 17 states of India. We have supported the frontline health workers with PPE kits and life-saving equipments, and we have supported vulnerable populations such as women-headed households, the elderly living alone, persons with disabilities, and migrant workers with food and hygiene kits. In the US, as a gesture of our gratitude, we have worked with local kitchens under the World Central Kitchen umbrella to serve more than 20,000 freshly cooked meals to frontline health workers in hospitals across New York, Bay Area, Chicago, and Boston. In Boston, for example, we worked with the Boston Veteran Affairs Hospital, the Massachusetts General Hospital, South Shore Hospital, and so on. As the crisis continues, we are now witnessing its impact on learning for children who do not have access to digital media, on the health of adolescent girls who are increasingly staring at the risk of early marriage due to widespread deprivation, on micro entrepreneurs such as street vendors and their ability to feed their families and so on. Dealing with this crisis requires a multi-pronged approach. As a collective philanthropic platform, that works on health, education, and livelihoods in a multi-dimensional way, AIF is committed to addressing all these challenges. As we reimagine the future, we are looking at how we help rebuild lives in a more resilient way with a focus on education and skill building, especially for women and girls. Using technology, how do we prepare youth for jobs of tomorrow? I'm very happy to share with you that we have just forged a non-commercial partnership with the world's largest edtech company called Baiju's. This partnership is going to serve children in 10,000 under-resourced government schools over the next three years. We are also the national partner for IBM's STEM for Girls program. I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge a generous gift from Vivek and Vandana Sharma towards improving the health of 10,000 adolescent girls and Raj and Nalli Sharma for school transformation through the Digital Equalizer program. Thanks to all of you for your time. I understand that these are difficult times for everyone, but we need you today for those underprivileged women, children and youth who need our support more than ever. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. We will now play a short video on how AIF has continued to serve communities during the COVID-19 pandemic.
Okay, so now we come to the most important part of today's program. Tasneem, you know as Mayo Angelo said, when you know better, you do better. So let us once again state for our audience what are the myriad of options that are available for them to donate to AIF. There are so many meaningful programs. There's something for everyone. If you care about women and maternal health, consider the Mansi program. If you care about adolescent health, consider the Mahi program. If you're interested in education, give to the LAMP program and we also have the skills training program. So there isn't just one option, whatever cost resonates with you, but what we want to emphasize is the time is now. So give, please give. If you can afford to give a lot, give a lot. If you can't afford to give a lot, give what you can. What matters is that you give and that together we achieve our objectives. And particularly in these COVID times, every organization has had to re-engineer and rethink about their giving model. But as Nishant highlighted, AIF has been in the forefront and has been trying hard to help everybody from the migrant laborers to the children and the women. So we haven't missed a beat in administering our programs. So you've seen all the different levels of giving. Find one that fits right to you and please give. If you gave last year, consider giving a little more this year. If you can afford to give more, give more. Give whatever you can. We appreciate your generosity and your consideration. We truly understand that the cause has to resonate with you. But as I mentioned, AIF is really tackling so many different causes. There are so many needs across the board in India, and COVID has only magnified that need. Absolutely. So please consider giving. Every little thing costs money. So if we have to think about continuing educating children, we now have to think about how to deliver the materials to them because they cannot come to a school. And if you think about maternal health, we now need to have many more service women who are able to go to the homes and take care of pregnant women. That's right. It was already an expensive service and now it's even more expensive because AIF has to act responsibly in this new environment, this new world that we find ourselves in. We have to continue to access the individuals who need help and we have to make them trust that AIF can deliver on what their requirements or what the services they need. So we urge you to consider giving to AIF today. Now more than ever, I think we as a community have to come together and help our fellow human beings. This is the final piece, ladies and gentlemen. And we'd like to thank the American India Foundation for having us, the Shillong Chimba Choir, be a part of this event. And this next and final piece is a very special song, a song that has been dedicated over the years to heroes, to those who have helped uplift others in the society and around them. A special mention to Susan Whitehead for exceptional work in the leadership in arts, science, and philanthropy. This song is dedicated to you, Wind Beneath My Wings. It must have been cold there in my shadow To never have sunlight on your face You were content to let me shine That's your way You always walked a step behind And I was the one with all the glory While you were the one with all the strength A beautiful face without a name For so long Beautiful smile to hide the the wind beneath my wings.
It might have appeared to go unnoticed But I've got it all here in my heart I want you to know I know the truth Of course you know it I would be nothing without you Good morning everyone. I am Nalini Sharma and it is my great honor and pleasure to present to you this morning Susan Whitehead, our esteemed honoree. Susan is a life member of MIT's Board of Trustees. She is the Vice Chair of the uh, Whitehead Institute of Biomedical Research at MIT. She's a Chair of the Board of Trustees at Berkeley School of Music. She sits on countless other boards of organizations around the world and is actively involved with all of them. Susan has had a lifelong passion for uh, Indian art, music, and culture. And her interests and expertise are quite varied. Like her love for plants and flowers, I found this out while we were on our hike in Nepal. She would identify all sorts of plants and flowers makes sense because she developed a curriculum uh, for the Brooklyn Botanical Garden and it was a comprehensive educational curriculum. And did you know that she was a trial attorney and also a district attorney? Everything Susan does, she does with passion, compassion, honesty, integrity. And she does it with style. While we were on our uh, high Himalayan trek, after three days, I looked like something that, that the cat dragged in. But Susan would hoist her backpack, pick up her poles, and put on that red lipstick. A girl's got to look good when she's hiking, you know, she would say. We gratefully acknowledge your commitment and support to AIF and its many programs that change the lives of women and girls in India. So it is with great pleasure, pride, and affection, I present to you my dear friend, Susan Whitehead, the honoree for AIF's 2020 Gala. Nalini, thank you for that really beautiful, overly generous introduction. I'm so honored to be with you today and receiving this recognition from AIF. I'm really humbled, I'm a little bit embarrassed by it, but I'm deeply delighted. So anybody who knows me well, you know I'm an Indiophile. I've been an Indiophile since my early 20s. And what is that about? For me, it's about, I love Indian food. I love the traditions from the north to the south. I love the beauty and spirit that's embedded throughout Indian culture, from the very mundane, everyday, to the truly elevated. I love the visual arts of India, again, from the tribal and local arts to the truly refined. I love the performing arts, the music, the dance, the oral traditions throughout India. And I love how family is deeply embedded at the center of Indian life. Should I say more? I think you get the idea. I really am an Indiophile, and I have been for many decades. So why do I really resonate with AIF, and why is this so meaningful to me? AIF's work was born out of friendship, deep friendship, 
and passion between the people of India and the people of the United States. They saw a disaster, the earthquake in Gujarat, and they acted, and they acted quickly, and they acted really effectively. And out of that first action, AIF was truly born, and they've gone on to evolve ever since that time. And they've evolved into um, addressing education, health care, economic development and mobility, and particularly for women and children. What I love about AIF, aside from being in all of these sectors, is they're really well run, they care about high impact, they're very well governed, and they have reached millions of people at this point throughout India. All of these sectors, women, children, health, education, and economic mobility are all the sectors that I've spent my whole life working in and given most of my time throughout my life. So this deeply resonates for me. I'm truly honored to receive this recognition and I look forward to doing great work with all of you going forward. Thank you so much for this honor. On behalf of AIF, I am pleased to present this leadership award to Susan Whitehead for her outstanding leadership in arts, science, and philanthropy. Wow! In this COVID moment, I have come upon this gorgeous award and recognition from AIF. Thank you so much. Dear, dear Susan, thank you for being the beautiful spirit that you are. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Annette Phillip, the founder, director of the Berkeley Indian Ensemble. And what an honor it is for us to be here on this momentous occasion at the AIF Gala when Susan Whitehead is being celebrated. Susan, you have been an inspiration to all of us at Berkeley. You've been instrumental in the success of Berkeley India Exchange, and you've impacted the Indian community in numerous ways. As a mentor and a guide, you remind us to be bold and brave and trust our instincts and keep moving forward. And with that mindset, the Berkeley Indian Ensemble is delighted to present an original composition by Sharon Reynolds, a recent Berkeley graduate who is a vocalist, composer, and bassist. Her message from the song Akash, meaning sky, is we will rise, looking toward the sky, just as dusk welcomes the dawn and winter its spring, we will rise and rebuild. Susan, this one's especially for you. Thank you.
This concludes the gala event. We hope you enjoyed the entertainment that was curated for this function. On behalf of my fellow co-chairs, I thank you all again for being with us this morning. I hope you enjoyed the show and hope to see you at future events. We also want to thank all of the people behind the scenes without whose efforts we could not have put together today's virtual program. We thank everybody so much for your contributions and for your donations. And we hope to see you all again throughout the year at the AIF New England Chapter events as well as at next year's gala. Thank you so much. Susan is... Ah, okay, black member. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she is the vice chair of the um, uh, Whitehead Institute of Biomedical Sciences at MIT. No. Biomedical research, okay. <laughs> Susan is the vice chair of da 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 da. It's so much with the AI, so much with the AI. Yeah. I love the, all of the performing arts in it. Oh, did I scratch my thumb? Yeah. Okay, yeah. maybe I should hold my hands here because I tend to do that. That means that AIF helps people regardless of caste, religion, shade of skin, ability level, and gender, sorry. <laughs> of course you would forget that one. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Today, we hope you enjoyed the entertainment that was curated for today's function. Thank you for... <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes. You are <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>